Hello folks, my name is Charles Webb and today we will be presenting on what's new in data marts. Now this is not only going to talk about what's new but we'll also provide an overview of what data marts are for those folks who may not be as familiar and then we'll also touch on some of the best practices and ways that you can take advantage of these capabilities and then we'll provide some resources where you can stay in touch with us with all the other goodness that we're focusing on delivering to you so that you can do more with data. Let's jump in. For this, we're going to quickly give you an introduction into data marts and how they can be of service to you by talking about the problems that this will help you solve within your organization. Now folks, when you think about Power BI, you know that our ethos has always been about helping you deliver the balance of self-service analytics and enterprise analytics. Now today's challenges, accessing data and answering questions of the day, especially those new questions that are coming from all different angles, complicate self-service quite a bit. Now for a business analyst, as you have those ad hoc analysis needs that are truly never ending, and you have self-service analytics that is desired, we know that context continues to add complexity in that analysis. And oftentimes, while you may have capabilities and solutions that are curated for you, you often need to mash that data up and perform complex calculations and analyses that require a ton of context, a ton of new data, as well as key critical thinking to figure out how all these things fit together. At the same time, it's really of paramount importance that these answers to these business questions are answered promptly, correctly, and accurately. And so you need a single source of the truth, but you still need a ton of flexibility and a ton of power to really ensure that you can deliver the right type of analytics capability and the right type of speed in a package that is easy to use and is very easy to deploy so that you can share those insights and move really rapidly in your pursuit of answering questions with data. Today's challenges supporting the business and driving successful adoption can still be quite cumbersome for IT organizations. The first challenge is limited human resources. It's very difficult to spin up enterprise solutions for every single question of the day as the business is constantly trying to operate in a difficult, challenging, and competitive operating environment. And there's the constraint of time and the constraint of complexity and the constraints of context. People, of course, are needed to drive these analytics efforts and to build these solutions, but they are a finite, finite resource. At the same time, fighting against time continues to be an everlasting constraint. And bringing in data and being able to curate that data to create new insights requires a certain level of discipline and focus and intentionality that is indeed time consuming. And when we couple this with large data volumes, which add complexity, it is challenging to ensure that the business has a lovable solution that was delivered fast and is also widely adopted. And so data marts are expressly looking at this equation, all these challenges and helping you as an IT organization solve these challenges more effectively in a still governed, disciplined, and core way. So that if you have a centralized IT department or you have IT individuals within individual business units in a hub and spoke model, data marts can play nice with either way that you want to deliver analytic solutions. Now, Data Marts in Power BI are a new offering, and the idea here is to marry self-service BI and ad hoc analysis. And the idea with this is this gives us an opportunity to help you deliver analytics within your organization, perfectly balancing self-service, ad hoc analysis, and then speed, time to value, but then governance and security. And so you see on the left-hand side, the canonical things that we hear folks talk about often that are super critical within organization are governance and security and scalability. And on the opposite side, we often hear things like agility and speed and flexibility. And if we take a step back, we need to ask ourselves, 
Why does that need to be a trade-off? Data marts were expressly created to make this a win-win for everyone. You get the power of BI, but you also get the power of ad hoc analysis, and you also get the power of self-service, all in one single, easy-to-use platform. Now, built inside of Power BI, this means the governance and security and scalability and administration controls and visibility and all that's going on, the ability to audit it, is all part of what makes uh, Datamart a product within the Power BI platform. And this means you can not only trust that you can identify, monitor, and manage these solutions, but it also means that you can enable business people to do it in a way that is traceable and is for sure governed, but also flexible and leans into the skills that these folks have already. When they understand things like Office and Power Platform and SQL, we're leaning into that a ton. And you can tell that the namesake here is going to play a bigger role because now folks, Datamart and Power BI builds on what you know of a Datamart classically, but it does a lot more. Now classically, a Datamart is a relational database for analytics, and it's for a department or a business unit to be able to do more with data. Now because Power BI is so focused on self-service analytics, and also helping you to deliver enterprise analytics, the Datamart in Power BI not only provides SQL to Power BI for the first time, but it is a full end-to-end -end self service capability. This means a very frictionless experience for folks that want to work in a no code or a SQL specific analytics way. Now, DataMart simplify the traditional ETL database and BI components needed for analytics. If you take a step back to build a solution for analytics typically requires the following things. First, you need to build and acquire connectivity to different data sources. This may, this may mean custom connectors, APIs, and licenses to be able to get access to data and integrate it into your tool of choice. Now, once you've acquired that tool, you have to figure out how you're gonna deploy that integration tool. Is it on-premise? Is it in the cloud? Do you need VMs to provide that compute? And this is just for the ETL step. Now you need a place to land that data traditionally, and this is typically a relational database, a SQL server, either on-premise, in a VM hosted somewhere, or even in a PaaS solution in the cloud. Now, stitching together the ETL means you need an orchestrator that's running the ETL jobs and loading data into the relational database. But, to serve downstream needs, not everyone needs access to the relational database or has those SQL skills. So typically you may build a BI semantic layer where you have standardized metrics and additional ways to describe a business domain and analytics, hierarchies, descriptions, relationships between entities, just to make it easier for those downstream reporting needs to be delivered. And if we take a step back, Datamart and Power BI unifies all these traditional moving parts, IaaS, SaaS, on-prem solutions, and gives you built-in data prep, a relational database, and BI components, all in a single pane of glass. And this allows for the following things that we have bolded here. The first is that it allows you, as a analytics practitioner, whether you're a low-code developer or otherwise, to simply get access to data with connectivity to any data warehouse, or any data source. And with these built-in connectors, this puts the data at your fingertips. Now, the next step we know that folks need to do is actually perform ETL and data prep steps. And this is where the data mart shines because we have the power of Power Query, the same thing that you may be used to in Azure Data Factory, in Excel, in Power BI, or even Power Platform. This, what you see is what you get drag and drop interface where you can undo and then see in real time uh, the transformations that you perform all in a graphical user interface. Now, using that data prep capability it allows that same creator to now load data into a relational database. And the relational database is key because this is something that's going to give a familiar, sustainable, and scalable way for folks to store and organize their data. 
And this is typically a best practice. We talked about how you would do this traditionally anyway to supplant your analytics investments, but providing this in a sassified solution built on top of the power of Azure data really means that folks can organize their data and we're optimizing that data constantly. All those best practices of things like statistics and clustered column indices and all these other capabilities are just things we do automatically for you so that you can focus on just serving data downstream. Now, when it comes to the data mart, we know that ad hoc analysis is one of the key value props of self-service. And we know that Power BI is great for self-service, but by bringing SQL into the fold, this lights up a whole new class of developers and analysts to be able to do more with data. And we believe this is super powerful because when it comes to storing and optimizing your data, analyzing your data is really that next step. And queries are the canonical way that you would do this. Now, the superpower of writing SQL is automatically enabled because behind the scenes, this is a SQL database. But the next thing that folks can do is analyze their data with visual queries. Now, these visual queries do write SQL behind the scenes, but they introduce the superpower of queries and SQL to everyone. So folks that are familiar with working with their data in Excel or Power Platform or Power BI are now instantly unlocked with this power of writing SQL queries and we allow you to save these and collaborate with other people so that you can do more truly with your data to answer those business questions. We know that data teams need this ad hoc self-service capability to collaborate and do more with data and boom, queries and SQL unlock that. Now, not everyone needs to write queries. They also need the ability in some cases to simply analyze data from reports. And in Power BI, the crux of a report really comes from a data set and data marts again simplifying some of those bi components needed for analytics automatically create one of those for you not only do we do that we're always tuning that for you and tuning the relational database behind the scenes enabling one-click reporting that's still super fast that clicky clicky draggy droppy experience that you're used to is instantly enabled but in a way where it's all in the web no additional software is needed and it's all about helping you focus on the context of analytics, which is already hard, and then finding those insights in the data in a self-service way. Now, I know this is a lot of power. I know this is a lot of power. And the key thing here for us is that enabling a secure and governed experience with data lineage, endorsement, sensitivity labels, role-based access control, and even role-level security is super critical. To do that, and do that well, we know that we need to give you an end-to-end -end capability that's built on the laurels of Power BI, integrates with Microsoft Information Protection Labels and Office, but also works the way that you would expect. And of course, Data Marts just include all this stuff built in. Now, while this sounds good, enabling new tools within an organization can be difficult. And because it's just part of Power BI Premium and part of the greater Power BI ecosystem, which is part of Power Platform and is a lot like Office, this means that that data culture within your organization where you have all these familiar skills of Office and Power Platform and even SQL, the folks that maybe aren't using Power BI directly today are just instantly lit up. And this means that data culture, that solving for how do we make data-driven decisions can meet the users where they are with the skill sets that they have and make it super easy for folks to just use data and use it more effectively. Now, when we talk about all this being included in Power BI, we really do mean it. This is included as part of Power BI Premium, and there will be no additional charges. And this is key, because if you think about building these types of solutions outside of Power BI, and you think about all the different moving parts and all the different bits of licensing and software keys and software that you might actually need to download and install, or agreements you have to figure out how you're going to lace between and procure, Everything's just here working as a single pane of the glass included is part of what you're already leveraging if you already have Power BI Premium. And this is just another advantage, another reason to take advantage of the data mark because there are no additional charges and it works the way that all other premium artifacts inside of Power BI do. Now folks, we want to switch gears. We wanna talk about the winning architectural patterns and this is important because we just introduced the data marts. And for those folks who may be using data marts already or those looking to evaluate, it's important to talk about some of the best ways to leverage these. Because again, the data mart we're providing is much more powerful than that, than that canonical data mart 
that might just be a relational database in a PaaS or IaaS solution. We're providing you with data prep and a relational database and a BI semantic model all in a single pane of glass, all built into a single SaaS solution. And this sort of changes the equation for how these solutions can be built. No longer do they have to be built top down where licenses and access to Azure or access to license keys or VMs need to be provisioned. Instead, from a self-service playground perspective, you can enable data marts to allow your organization to move very quickly and build out analytic solutions, leading into those patterns of things like data mesh, things like centers of excellence, things like hub and spoke models, and most importantly, helping you to deliver the discipline at the core and still the flexibility at the edge that you're looking for. The next slide, we're really gonna dive into recommendations and two key ways that we see these data marts being leveraged so that you can do more with data. Now, before I dump into this, I do wanna acknowledge something that's really critical. We empathize with those users that are thinking about data marts and are concerned about what it may do to their organization's analytics and data state. For example, we know that data mart as a generic term is something that some organizations have tried to get rid of. The idea being there's no way to have a centralized and governable analytics data state when you have all of these silos. But data marts, as we talked about with the lineage, the impact analysis, the APIs, and then the centralization of all the data marts within things like the data hub, these are gonna provide you with a explicit way to monitor, manage, and govern all the flexibility and analytics needs that happen at those outer edges of where you can provide analytics at scale and at speed. And so let's just dive in really quickly to what that looks like and how you can leverage these data marts to actually do more with your data and build on your current existing analytics footprint. So just jumping in folks, some key architecture patterns are first, making great use of your data warehousing footprint. So in this case, note that data marts connect to all popular data warehouses. And this means that organizations can utilize their data warehouse while adding additional data sources or complementary business logic to a data mart. And so some no brainer use cases include things like master data, where I may have a centralized, cleaned, and managed by my data warehousing or other central team version of, let's say, the customer or the product or even the geography or business line definition. This centralized conformed dimensional data makes a ton of sense to continue to leverage in your data warehouse, but ensure that there's instant connectivity to a data mart so that when you need that flexibility at the edge, that discipline at the core can still be maintained. Key facts as well, figures that need to be analyzed and auditable are also always going to make a ton of sense in your data warehouse. And so in this pattern where we're thinking about a dependent data mart, continue to leverage your data warehouse for all those needs, but know that data marts accentuate that investment. Because when you need a greater level of flexibility to answer those questions of the day and to mash that data with additional data sources, you don't have to be forced to bring in additional scenarios over and over and over again, especially for one-off things to answer particular business questions. Instead, you can rely on your investment in centralizing and providing those conformed dimensions, those key facts, and really lean into this hub and spoke model where you are the hub and spokes can build these dependent data marts, leverage what makes sense, trust that that is the master key data that's audible, traceable, and trustable but then still provide the level of control and speed that they need to deliver particular and bespoke answers to those key questions of the day. You also get the benefit of workload isolation and granular control. So when you have those particular geographic or compliance requirements, data marts will allow you to deliver, again, those answers much faster. Now, on the opposite side, of that coin. Still leaning into your analyst architecture, you may have areas where you need strategic answers. You still need to centralize and govern key capabilities, but you want to enable 
a massive amount of flexibility and speed for analytics in a self-service capacity. Now, data marts from that standpoint connect to over 200 data sources, and businesses and departments can create purpose-built or domain-oriented data marts, and this is really meant to accelerate self-service analytical needs. So this is all about flexibility and providing more power to your developers. And because a lot of the data mart experiences are low code, no code, this really means those citizen developers in some of those key areas where context is absolutely king. In this independent data mart scenario, it's all about delivering that self-service ad hoc analysis need in a way that is still, again, traceable, easy to monitor, and also auditable. So when you have those additional compliance needs, when you want to figure out how do we centralize, standardize in these key terms, that data is in the data hub, it's available through APIs, and this is a pattern where it's a win-win for everyone. So what pause here? We're gonna kind of pivot gears. We talked a lot about what the data marts are, and we talked about the value prop and some of the patterns where you can leverage these at scale. But I wanna move over and now I wanna talk a little bit about what's new and coming soon. And this is going to be an overview of recent releases and upcoming features to data marts. One of the first critical steps to getting and enabling a strong self-service analytics profile within your organization is providing access to those key data sources. Now, one of the critical challenges we've heard is that it's very difficult to configure and centralize all the different credentials that are needed to connect to those critical enterprise data sources and from centralizing the management and governance and administration to the simple accessibility and discoverability of those connections, this process can be very manual, tedious, and outside of any capability that you have today. Power BI solves this by using Power Query Online and the Name Connections feature to make it easier for you to centralize that connectivity to those known enterprise data sources. So now, when data lives either in the cloud or on premises, your users can easily find the right connection credential and gain the connectivity they need to access all the data that lives within your organization's walls. From a analytics perspective, the first step towards analyzing your data is actually just getting at the data. Now, providing more connectors for ETL is critical because from a data prep perspective, these connectors unlock your data, whether it's an online service, a database, or SaaS solutions out there, as well as open source protocols like web APIs, OData, and more. So in addition to simple things, again, like Access or Excel or SharePoint, we have all those other file formats like Parquet or CSV, and then Power Platform integration, and then, of course, the things that you would expect in Azure, but then just those generic online services and other standard protocols to make it easier for your organization and your users to do way more with data. Now, folks, we talked about how queries enable ad hoc analysis visually or through code with SQL. Now, the ability to save these queries is of paramount importance because as an analyst, you're answering those questions of the day that are coming in, but you need a way to collaborate, reuse, and ultimately share these with your teammates. And saving queries, the ability to also name these queries, use multiple tabs, really lends itself to the way that analysts want to work, and by providing some analysts with the ability to do this visually, that is, without writing SQL, this further democratizes the superpower and the key capability of SQL, but puts it in the hands of any analyst that knows how to use and work with Excel. And this same capability, this same experience, allows them to really push the envelope of the types of analysis that are quite difficult if you don't know how to write SQL. At the same time, those analysts that do know how to write SQL will feel right at home with the capability to write SQL with IntelliSense and syntax highlighting, and will save those queries as well. Now we've talked about what makes a data mart extremely powerful, but let's zoom in and talk more about reporting. 
Now we know that there are a segment of your analysts that want to do ad hoc analysis with visualizations and with queries. But Power BI reports serve that next segment of users that want those interactive reports, those clicky clicky draggy droppy experiences, things like Q&A, which we show here. And you can see how easy it is to go from a data mart and working in the relational database world to now the semantic model where you have all these other interactive experiences. Now the key thing here is one click and now we're in a report. We have the full capability of the canvas. So in this example, I'm using the Q&A functionality and this allows me to very quickly create a report where I can ask business questions kind of like a Bing or Google search and get really quick answers. But there are other experiences. If we go back and you look at the visualizations pane, there are hundreds of charts that are available to me, including what's also available in the custom visuals store. And this really enables interactive reporting at scale. These reports can be easily shared and distributed for all different types of analytics needs. We know that creating value inside and from a data mart is really important, but not everyone's gonna get access to the data mart. And so for those folks that need to get access to a data mart, but just uh, from a consumption perspective, we have multiple options. We allow you to connect to a data mart right here from the data hub, where we catalog all your data. And this allows folks to get access to it if you don't want them inside of the data mart, but just from a read-only perspective. And you can see here, they can connect through uh, SQL. And the other thing that the data hub will provide you with access to is connection to just the auto-generated data set. So you have multiple layers with which you can give people access to build the downstream consumption needs that they're looking for. Whether they need more advanced things and full access to SQL endpoint, or they just want to move really quickly, this simplified experience allows for simple discovery, endorsement, sensitivity labels to be applied, but then all the Power BI clicky clicky draggy drop experiences to be created right there in desktop. Folks, we know when you are building analytic solutions in your enterprise, this work is typically done on data teams. And so enabling and empowering your teams to do more with data in a collaborative way is the key thing that these capabilities enable. The first thing is multiple contributors. And this means that as we've enabled role-based access control and you're using the workspaces within Power BI to build your data marts, if you use the workspace roles of contributor, member, or admin, as well as any owner, all of these folks can indeed collaborate together as they're building out the data mart structure, if they're adding additional queries, and then if they're adding additional ETL steps, all those data sources that ultimately end up in tables and queries and models are all capabilities that can be collaboratively built out to deliver those downstream bits of analytics value that you need. At the same time, we know that folks do leave organizations and the owner of the data mart is a key capability because they have the utmost admin rights on that particular data mart. Now, as folks leave, we know that you need the ability to peacefully transition the power, if you will, the ownership of a data mart from one individual in your organization to another. And the ability to seamlessly do this with a button to take over the data mart's ownership is another key capability that we're delivering just to make it easier for your data teams to be super productive with data marts. Now, as you know, data marts auto generate a data set to enable that downstream BI reporting. Now, by default, a data marts auto generated data set is in direct query mode. However, one of the performance improvements and optimizations that we will do silently for you is to automatically import your data. That is to use the super fast VertiPack cache to ensure that your data in your data set is perfectly optimized for BI reporting. Now, the direct query data set is of course optimized because the database powering the data mark, that relational database already has things like automatic statistics management and Every table is built with clustered column indexes. However, the VertiPack engine that is in SQL was started really with a VertiPack engine in a data set. And so this import mode, this import storage mode, if you will, is truly a in-memory cache that enables that true clicky clicky draggy droppy experience. And what we're doing here is we're enabling that automatically for you. So there's no need for 
managing the refreshes of the import mode. There's no need to orchestrate all of that. There's no need for orchestration or management either. And this just makes reports faster. So harnessing the power of a super fast VertiPak engine is literally just on by default and you don't need to do anything to take advantage of it. Now, I wanna take a step back and think about Theta Marts more holistically. We've talked about a ton of value for you. We've also heard your feedback that in order to provide the right level of trust in this product, you need additional transparency into what it's going to look like from a capacity metrics perspective. Now, this is important because we've always said that Power BI data marts will be included as part of your premium subscription. However, as part of doing that, you still wanna see what those usage charges will look like because we will bill based on your consumption. As you're using your CPU, this is how we leverage your capacity, right? And so you wanted to see what that will look like on the capacity metrics app so that you could plan. And this is exactly what we're planning to do. And this is going to help you leverage these new insights and visibility for planning, let's say cross-charging other departments, and really just ensuring that you know how to manage, monitor, and govern these things. I wanna pause here. All right, folks. We're now going to segue to an update on your top ideas. And for those folks who may not know about Power BI ideas, the site available at ideas.powerbi.com. This is a functionality that we leverage actively to take in your feedback, your product feature requests, and prioritize our plans against what you need. And we actively review these top ideas that are voted on by your peers, which means that as you create an idea and your peers say, hey, this is also important to me, additional votes are possible for a given idea. And as these ideas get upvoted and upvoted and upvoted, we're constantly taking a look at all those ideas. And those top ideas are the ones that we work to pick up. What this means is that the ideas that you create are the things that we actively work to go build into the product. And we do this expressly to try to serve you with as many capabilities you need to do more with data. So let's jump in on our next slide for those top ideas and an update on all of those. So latest update on some of your top ideas, and please, again, feel free to go to ideas.powerbi.com to vote and add your new ones, are on the following slide. So here we have our ideas and top statuses, and you can see that Datamart team administration is an idea we've actually delivered. So we talked about the multiple contributors, we talked about takeover ownership, those are all the things that you said you were looking for, and we have recently just delivered this. Saving queries are another thing that you asked for, the ability to do. So today in a SQL Server, we don't provide that a, a capability, but in Data Marts, we now do. And in the web experience, we will save your queries. Uh, so this is a new experience that's really enabling that ad hoc analysis that we talked about previously. Uh, and this is a differentiating capability. It's all about you being able to do more with data. We delivered that. And the next thing is, Datamart Desktop Connector. You told us that you wanted something that makes it super easy to discover these things in the experience of Power BI Desktop so you didn't have to put in a connection string. And you saw how we delivered that previously on the Data Hub side, where now we have a dedicated connector and get data. And we also can use the Data Hub connector directly to, to enumerate all the data marches in our organization. And this bubbles up the sensitivity labels, the endorsement that you've applied, and details about who created that. So you have all that metadata, all that interesting semantic information that provides context to what that data mart is, including the owner. Now, I wanna pivot here and talk more about some of the features that are under review by our team. The first is data marts DML. And what this really means is the ability uh, to create objects within the data mart. So you can imagine that right now, the experience is tailored towards an analyst, but you don't necessarily have the ability to do everything you'd wish you could do with a full relational database. Now, DML is going to allow you to create tables, store procedures, table valued functions, and other things, schemas, that allow you to better organize and do more with your data from a pro developer perspective. We're working on delivering this as well as views, right, and other types of DDL so that it's super easy for you to deliver the right type of 
uh, relational analytic solution. And the additional possibilities with this are quite endless. We've heard a number of things that you're looking for, everything from Power Automate integration to things like Power Platform integration to enabling all your pro developers using tools like SSMS or Azure Data Studio to actually create and be more productive with data marts themselves. So this idea is under review. We know it's super important to you. Uh, there are so many votes, but we wanted to just call out the, the point that we are actively reviewing that idea. The second one is we know we talked a little bit about how data marts enable great power, but it also is great responsibility. We know that from an organizational maturity perspective, it doesn't always make sense to enable everything for everyone. And so enabling data marts for select users, we've heard your feedback is all about enabling this for specific 80 users or groups. And we're evaluating this functionality too to make it easier for you to do more with data, but also in the governed, secured way that you're ready for so that you can roll this out in a concerted, disciplined, and intentional fashion. This idea is definitely also under review. And then lastly, data flow output to data marts is super important. We know that the Power BI ecosystem caters to these low code, no code developers. And as part of this, uh, this ability is going to give you the ability to append and replace and delete your data. And we know that from a data prep perspective, while data marts get you started, additional data prep capabilities integrating with the data flow gen two that's coming soon are needed. Now this feature is interesting because it's kind of a feature that has a prerequisite from the perspective of DML DDL, but this is something else we're taking a look at. Again, we want to cater to the pro developers, but we also want to cater to the citizen developers and provide an ability for fusion teams that is teams that have the citizen developers and pro developers, AKA every organization to do more with data and collaborate in a friendly and team oriented fashion. So that's what all these ideas are about. And I wanted to call that again, we read every idea, all of your feedback on Twitter and other social media forums, as well as on the Power BI community site, as well as just on ideas where we have folks commenting and adding additional context to a particular idea and sharing their use case are very much appreciated. Folks, we hope you'll continue to vote. And if we're missing anything, please let us know and we will be for sure to review it. So folks, as we move along to sort of the twilight of this session, the key thing we want to do is make sure that you know that you can absolutely stay connected with us and we'd love that. You can stay tuned a number of ways. The easiest way is a lot of us are on social media, uh, the whole team via MS Power BI at Twitter. There's also various other uh, very easy ways to stay engaged with us. There's the Power BI community where uh, this is the official Microsoft community and place where you can talk to key experts from us as well as our MVPs, as well as members of our support and product teams. We're always listening and evaluating and looking at those places just to ensure that we get your feedback captured and we're promptly responding to whatever it is you need from us to make the product more useful and help your users do more with data. So follow along with us here. We're gonna jump right into some key resources for you moving forward. You can keep up to date with the latest on data marts four different ways. The first way is through the monthly Power BI blog. This is where we post all the feature announcements the new capabilities that we've released every month. In addition to this, every few months, we'll summarize all of these in a roll-up post. The last one of these that we did was in August. And here what we try to do is provide those updates that maybe fell through the cracks between those monthly updates, as well as call out your attention to key functionality and features where we know you've had pain or your key ideas have been answered and delivered. That's the monthly blog. Now, in addition to those monthly blogs, we talk about some of those key capabilities, know that we also will have additional blogs there at blog.powerbi.com on features that are important to you. We've heard your feedback that you wanted to understand how to get started with data marts in minutes, and we delivered that blog. We also heard your feedback that you wanted to understand how to really deliver and get started with consumption scenarios, and we've delivered that blog as well. Coming soon, of course, is a administration blog that's going to help you understand how can you effectively manage, 
monitor and govern data marts within your organization so that you get the right blend of discipline at the core and also flexibility at the edge. Now moving on to our second area, this is our public documentation and we have a short link here, aka ms slash datamart docs, where we have all the kind of technical details that you may need to understand how data marts work, as well as break out into specific feature areas that are important to you. Everything from access control and security to things like how do we compare data flows to data marts to data sets are all the types of things we answer in our public facing documentation. We also have technical details of best practices and limitations and other key considerations that will help you be extremely effective with delivering data marts within your organization and also be a place where you can reference best practices and guidance as needed as you go along your data mart journey. You can put all of your creators to this documentation as well as your administrators and your consumers and there will be a place for them to understand how to leverage data marts most effectively. Moving on to the next place, we talked a lot about the Power BI Ideas Forum, and I want to continue to emphasize that this is an area that we use for planning and hearing your feedback about what you need in the product to do even more with data. On ideas.powerbi.com, this is where we comb through the site religiously to ensure that we understand what's important to you and all the context needed to deliver the feature as fast as possible. This is also where you can collaborate with your community members and add additional context of how a feature may be different for you versus everyone else. And again, these are things that we are looking at daily. Now, the last area is the Power BI root map. And this is something that will help you understand both data marts as well as the greater Power BI ecosystem and how all the different capabilities fit together. Each capability inside of Power BI, including data marts, is all about, of course, helping you do more with data, but all the different capabilities are often quite connected. The Power BI release plan is one single place where you can understand not only all the Power BI connected things, but also how it plays with the greater analytics and power platform and office contexts, as a lot of features play really nicely with the rest of what Microsoft brings to bear from a complete data state and data governance perspective. Now, as we work to start to close here, I want to take this moment to recognize and appreciate all of the folks in the Power BI community. We really do appreciate you. We know you're represented across the globe and you've taken your time today to listen to us talk about data marts. Now, we know from a community perspective, as well as through the many different independent user groups worldwide, that you are the heart and soul of the product and you help us deliver analytics capabilities that help everyone in the world around the world do more with data so thank you very much for attending and thank you so much for all you do to help make this product better we really appreciate it i also want to provide a special thanks to the data platform geeks and sql server geeks community initiatives the data platform summit along with Microsoft helping to deliver this, would not be here without these organizations. And again, we really appreciate your time today to listen to us talk about data marts because from a SQL Server perspective, a data platform perspective, a Power BI perspective, and then finally just bringing and rounding out all the different tracks across the Data Platform Summit, we really appreciate the opportunity to talk about data marts and how data marts can enable your organizations to do more with data. So thank you so much to Data Platform Geeks, SQL Server Geeks, all the various community initiatives out there. We, Microsoft, as well as the Data Platform Summit, are very much appreciative of all of you in the community as well that have helped make this possible. Last but not least, thank you folks for listening to our session today where we talked about data marts. I've had your attention for about 45-ish minutes, and I'm very, very, very much appreciative. I want to call your attention out to three ways that you can win prizes. First, you can post your selfie with the hashtag DPS2022. That is hashtag DPS2022. The second way is that you can give session and conference feedback. And the last way is that you can visit our sponsors and exhibitors. Now, that being said and set aside, please follow us on Twitter at the Data Geeks and the Data and AI Summit. And 
Again, thank you so much for attending the Data Platform Virtual Summit 2022. Our goal here has been to inform you about data marts. We hope you really, really enjoyed the time and learned something new. I do hope you'll also join me for a live Q&A session, as this will be a great opportunity to take anything that you learned today, any questions, comments, concerns that you may have or that may have bubbled up, and bring them to me such that we can answer them and answer them live. All your feedback, your comments, your concerns, anything constructive or anything forward looking where you're hoping the product will do something expressly is very much appreciated. Thank you.